Cool. Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and today I'll be showing you the Auto Trail Apache 632, which is a 2015 model. <laughs> So on the pass on the driver's side of the vehicle, you have your hookup points. So when you arrive on site, you want to do some charging of the batteries. Get your 25 meter hookup lead, lift the collar, slide on, and then you unhook, press the blue lever on the left hand side, and pull out. Always hook the vehicle up first, as it's more safer to hook the vehicle than the site than walk around with a live lead. Should anything be wrong with your hookup lead? Underneath you've got your grey water, so this is your waste water. So this is all the water you've used, so anything that's went down a drain plug goes into a separate holding tank and then you've got a lever here which you just open to drain off. Normally you drive over a motorhome service bay on the way out of a caravan club site, but if it's a smaller site it may be a CL site. Um, and it'll just be a hole in the ground. But in the winter, it's crucial you drain all the water out of the vehicle, so waste, fresh, and boiler, which I'll show you when we go around the vehicle. To open these lockers, you've got a small round key. You just turn until the lock becomes able to push in. And then there, you've got your shower hose, your hookah bleed and a water filling pipe. So when we're here I may as well show you your shower. So you put your bullfinch in there, connector and turn it and should the pump be on you'll either get cold or hot and this is great for the dogs, the bikes, the boots, the kids when they've been on the beach just to, to hose them all off. And then in here, so this is lockable, so if it spins like so, that means it's locked. Turn it until you can push it in. And then this is your fresh water intake. So you put a hose pipe in there until it overflowed if you want a full tank of water. If not, you can see inside the increments of the um, water. So it'll go 25, 50, 75, 100% of fresh water. If you are wild camping, you will have to take water with you if you are going to a site tend to take a maximum of 20 litres as this keeps the weight down of the vehicle and improves the fuel economy and it gives you the option to stop off and use the toilet or have a cup of tea should you be travelling a long distance. You've got your two food vents, your boiler dra your boiler cowl here. So this is just make sure this is obstruction free which it is because it's not on the oil inside so it should be fine. And then below you've got your two drain taps for your fresh water so you filled up further along the van and then it's coming to the end of a holiday and you've got a full tank of water or you simply want to drain it down for the winter you just open both of these and then you'd open one which will drain 50% and you'll open the other which will drain 50% and open them both together will in will drain the whole tank off to 100% so in the winter no water on the vehicle because it's a plastic holding tank underneath the chassis if it freezes the water in there it'll split the tank and pipes and it's quite expensive to fix the damage so this is your garage area so in here you've got your carpets your own winding handle and you pump and things is on the other side, which I'll show you. And then coming to the back of the vehicle, you've got your high level brake light and built in reverse camera. And then you have got your spare wheel here, so this opens, this would go in here, open this, this cover will lift off, loosen the nut, this will lift off and reveal your spare wheel. And then below you've got your tow bar which is detachable so you'll just turn that put the key in turn that and that lift out but then you do have seven pin on the adapter but if you take the adapter out like so you've got 13 pin there so you've got a choice of the electric should you be towing with the vehicle and then this is just a bigger garage door on the passenger side for your 
garage, the carpets, carb mat, winding handle, lights here operate by touching the top once the main control panel is on. You've got a 12 volt and a 240 when hooked up three pin plug. There you have your sure floor pump. So this will kick in when you open the tap should the pump be on. And then you've also got your drain tap which is here. So in the winter it's crucial that you lift this tap up like so. And it'll drain the 10 litres of water directly underneath the chassis. Leave it like this when you are not using the vehicle when it is in cold weather. So if you stop using the vehicle from about October time or November to about March, April time, leave it standing up when you're not using it. And this will drain all the 10 litres of water in the boiler off and stop it freezing the boiler because if it was to freeze in the boiler, it's not covered under warranty as it's your responsibility to winterize your vehicle and it's very expensive to replace or repair so make sure it is completely drained and then once you've lifted this tap if you go in and lift all your mixer taps inside the vehicle if you put them in the middle position this stops any air from building up inside the boiler and taps so when you do come to reuse the vehicle you shouldn't get an airlock but then when you so when you are ready to reuse it lie it down like so fill the vehicle with water put the pump on open your taps to the cold side first it'll automatically cough will automatically come through put the hot side it'll cough splutter make all sorts of noises until you get a steady flow on one tap do them all and then you are primed for the season to lock your locks on the garage if you shut your door turn them put the key in quarter of a turn And tap like so. And there it is locked. Coming down further down the vehicle, you've got your external gas point. So this works up your bottles on board. So you get a bullfinch connector, same as the shower. Put it in, turn. You need a Jubilee clip and some gas hosing to your Kadak or external barbecue. And then you'd attach it to that item and it'll run off your main gas supply on board. You've got your cassette in here, so your toilet's there, that's where you do your business, your business all ends up in here. And then should the slide on the toilet be closed, you'll be able to lift the handle and pull it out like so. You've got some wheels there so you can drag it around the site when full. And then you've got your waste disposal point on site, which is normally behind or beside the toilet block. Take the cover off. Press this button here. It stops the... It basically allows a bit of air in, stops the glugging, gives it a consistent flow. Tip it down. Once you've tipped it down, there's normally a tap there. Put some water in, give it a slosh around, break some more of the dirt up. Press it again and empty it. If you are using the chemical, so once you've emptied it for the second time, it's ready to put chemical in. If you're using chemical, a cap full of chemical in the liquid form, straight into here and back into the vehicle. If you're using the tablet form, which are um, special pepper tablets in a sachet, which are very similar to a dishwasher tablet in the cellophane. But don't use dishwasher tablets, use the correct tablet, but they are just like a dishwasher tablet in cellophane. Put a pint of water back in here, push it into the van and drop one straight down the toilet and it will break up into the liquid from in the cellophane sachet. And then you can also lock this door here, like so. So coming down the vehicle, so this is your LPG locker, your gas locker, liquid petroleum gas. So same locks as the garage, so once you've opened it up, you push it up and it'll stay there. You can fit two six kilogram bottles on here and you I would recommend tying them in once you've got them in place and if you put the pigtail on the bottle it's a left hand thread so it's opposite thread to normal so it's not righty tighty it's lefty tighty and tightens on the bottle and turn on at the top of the bottle always turn off when you're traveling because it's safer to do so should 
and then buy your diesel so at the passenger door. And then you can lock it like so. And on your slam panel here, you've got your tyre pressure, so the five and a half bar all round, which is equivalent to 79.5 PSI, front and rear. Your tool kit lives underneath the seat there, so should you need to change that wheel, you've got a jack and a brace, a torn eye, and a screwdriver in there for changing the wheel or being torn away. And underneath the floor, because it's a fiat, is where your engine battery lives, so should you ever need to get access to change the battery in the future, you'd lift this cover off, and the battery can lift out through the cab. But your bonnet release is on the passenger side of the dashboard, which gives you a jumping point for your jump start should the battery be flat on the van. So you've got your jumping point, which is here. So normally this cover would be lying over here and they'll open this cover, put your key down into the slot here, lift it up. And then this is where your positive connection for a charger or jump lead would go your negative would go on here then you've got all your fluids so you've got your oil filler and your dipstick for checking your levels you've got your brake fluid this cover I lift off and give you access to your radiator fluid and your power steering fluid but the main one you're going to need is your screen wash when touring with the van and then on the front here so you've got your paint code for the blue so should you ever need a uh, chipstick or some paint to repair any damage your paint coats there and then your secondary conversion weight plates here so that's your chassis number for the fate side it's three and a half ton with that tow bar you can tow a train weight of 4750 so that's the van and your trailer car whatever you're going to tow with it and you've got your front and back axle weights once on board the vehicle, this is your main 12 volt control panel. So to put power on, you've got the on button in the top corner there. So if you just click that, you then have four other buttons. So you put your pump, so this surface is your, your tap in the kitchen, the hand basin, your toilet, shower and your exterior shower. So you must have that on when you are wanting to use water. You've got this transfer button here, which I wouldn't put on as this will change, change the motorhome battery to the engine battery which means you would then be running the motorhome off the engine battery and I wouldn't advise that as it will flatten the battery on the Fiat side and then you would require um, either a jump start or someone coming to rescue you. You've got your awning lights here so this is the light on the outside of the vehicle and then this is if you scroll through, so that is the make of your control panel. You've got your event timer, so you can, if you can put a timer on, so you can set your timer like so. You can set an alarm, so should you be catching a ferry, this will start beeping at this time to wake you up. So that's how you'd set it by going into it there. Change your time, so you'd go in and change the time, which is displayed on the control panel. Your tank heaters to turn them on press there so if it was going to be a cold night and um, in the winter time you can put your tank heaters on and this puts power through your puts a current through your water to stop it freezing yeah. your external temperature your solar which is the current coming to the vehicle which is zero because we're hooked up at the moment and that takes the that is the bigger voltage coming on board so then the solar will go to sleep you've got the uh, the current coming off the leisure battery your waste water is empty and your fresh water is 75% full. Your vehicle battery is 14.4 volts and your leisure battery is 14.4 volts. And then moving across to your Truma Combi um, display. So to press and wait this panel up if it's off, just press and hold until you get that screen and then enter, press OK. So you've got your van with the thermometer in, this is the temperature, so you can go all the way to 30 degrees, all the way to off. So for this we'll just say 25, and then you press the wheel once, and then this is preset the heating to 25 degrees. Moving along, you've got the thermometer and the water, which is your water, so you've got off, so if it 
you don't have any water on board, don't put the water on because you'll just fry the element out in the boiler. You've got 40 or you've got 60 um, degrees of water or you've got boost which will prioritise your water to your heating. So for this we'll just say 60 degrees of water, press, that's preset your water to 60 degrees. And then moving along you've got your gas bottle and electricity so this is a source you are using off so if you were while camping you would just have to use gas on its own so this would be heating your van on gas and your water you've got a mix one which is a one kilowatt of electric and gas you've got mix two which is two kilowatts of electric and gas which you'd normally use in the winter should you want to um, give your heating a boost and boost the van heat up time and water and then if you are on a smaller site, you'd use electric one, which is electric on one kilowatt. Or you can use electric on two. So if you've paid your site fees and you're on a camping and caravan and site in the UK, you can use two kilowatts of electric. And you wouldn't want to waste your gas. Moving along, you've got your fan. So this is a 12 volt assisted fan. So you'd use eco if you were while camping, as this um, doesn't take a higher source of 12 volt. Or you've got high which will blow it round the van. So Eco will still blow it round the van, but it'll do it very um, on a lower source of 12 volt, whereas this will use a take 12 volt source and blow it round the van. So you'd normally use high when you were hooked up. Coming down the bottom, you've got a timer here, so you can t time the heating to come on and off once. So if you are getting up at six, at seven o'clock in the morning, you might want the heating to come on at six. You can set that, you've got the clock that displays on here, the time, and then should you get a warning triangle here, which means something's failed, you can go to the spanner in the corner there and turn it down to reset and press and hold and it will reset your boiler. You should operate your Dometic fridge, so if you turn it on like here, like so, and it'll light up blue, and then if you press the the one that looks like a plug. This is mains electric, so when you are hooked up, this will work your, up, your fridge on 240 volt. Then you've got next to it gas, so should, so should you be on a site, you would use electric anyway. Should you not be anywhere near hook up, you can use gas to cool your fridge. So the idea here is you cool the fridge on either electric or gas, and then the battery setting, it's failing there because it only works when the um, the engine's running, so it'll send a 12 volt feed from the alternator to the fridge. And this is a keep cool setting, so it's a 12 volt. So it basically makes your fridge into a cool box and keeps the temperature at it at, as it was when you depart the site or home. So the idea would be to cool it on electric or gas first. So if you're lucky enough to keep this at home, you'd hook it up the night before. Or should your storage facilities have hook up, hook it up the night before, put your shopping in, allow it to cool overnight, then when you are ready to hit the road, just put on the 12 volt the battery and it'll keep the temperature the same no matter how long you travel. You've got your temperature here, so one being warm to five being cool, and then a reset there. You've got your freezer box. But the idea with the fridge is with your it, part of your winterizing procedure so you've done all your water so your boiler your waste and your fresh you would then come and anti back your fridge out and make it lovely and clean sometimes people put air fresheners in their fridge air fresheners to give it a lovely smell so you've cleaned it all out the last thing you want to do is shut your fridge door because then it's trapped all that nice air in the fridge and that's going to become smelly moldy and moist air so if you just press here slide this forward this then stops the door from locking allows air circulation in and out the fridge and it shouldn't build any bacteria or mold up so to operate the skylight above the bed if you press this in the ball then release you can then pull it all away or you can put it in the groove should it be a nice day for a nice breeze a bit of ventilation in the van but when travelling, make sure it's always shut and that's always above the bar, it means it's shut. Got a blackout for on an evening and a fly screen should you be away in the summer to stop the mozzies. So operate your toilet, so if you press this button, 
that's it flush with your fan on kicking which is for ventilation so when it's flashing the fans on to switch the fan off if you just press it it'll cut out and then you can press this and it'll flush your toilet you'll hear your pump kick in there because it's just in your garage behind your toilet and then you've got a slide here which is called your trap door so if you slide it at the right it'll open the cassette but it must be closed to get the cassette out the exterior of the vehicle otherwise it won't come out so once you've used it close the cassette some people actually use the toilet with its slide door open and then this will indicate red when the cassette needs to be taken out and replenished with chemical you've got your bathroom light on the side of the toilet roof cabinet here got the same skylight as in the bedroom and you've got some more toilet roof cabinet there and then in your shower you've got a hanging rail so this is good for wet towels but it's also good if you hang your coats on hangers should you have been caught in the rain and let them drip dry or any clothes drip dry in here and if you've got the heating on as this is a smaller space in the van it gets really warm with the heating so now in your kitchen you've got your three lit gas rings there and then you've got one electric hot plate on 240 volts only when you're hooked up and it'll indicate with a little red light there that it's on but, but once you've had any of the hob on allow it to cool before you put the glass lid down and then below you've got your you've got your grill so allow the thermocouple to get warm before releasing and it, it'll stay lit. And then you have your oven. Lights like so. But a tip is if you've had this van, if you've had a if you've had the vehicle standing for a length of time and you're struggling to get your fridge or your heating and hot water system to light on gas always bring it through the hob first as this is the highest point that the gas will reach and then you'll be able to light your other gas appliances you've got your microwave so to work your microwave if you just press eco and then it'll wake up and then it is just a 800 watt microwave on mains electric 240 volt you, your cover for your sink your chopping board so when you're traveling this just slides neatly in here stores away you've got your plug for your microwave there and your rack for your cups this does your lighting in up underneath your bench seats so you press and hold it's a dimmer as well so it'll brighten and dim like so and then you put your light for your underneath your bench and then you've got your cutter drawer and some storage underneath the sink. So in the two lock overhead lockers above the driver's side, so in the first one after your kitchen, you have your TV aerial, your status TV aerial. So when traveling, always make sure you've loosened the nut and pulled the aerial in as far as it will go and then tightened. And then if you are struggling to get a TV signal, you can loosen it and push it up and use the toggle, which is on the bottom, to direct the aerial on the roof. But a tip is here to look for where the other motorhomes and caravans on your site are pointing. But make sure it is securely fastened when traveling. And then you do have your Vision Plus booster here. So you've got min and max. So should you be struggling to get a TV signal, you need to bring it up to max or turn it down to min should the signal be too strong. Then in the next locker along, you've got your power supply unit. So you've got your MCBs in here and RCD um, trip tester. You've got all these switches here which must stay on so your water heater, your space heater and your charger, they'll only work when you are connected to 240. But then of course your water heater and space heater work off gas as well. But this will only light up when on 240 so just leave them pushed in like so. You've got 
four little buttons here which just mimic the control panel so that the duplicate of the control panel so just use them off that and you've got your system shutdown button so should you have the vehicle for standing for any length of time if you don't want a power drain if you just press that it will isolate everything on the back end of the motorhome so all the 12 volt you've got all your 12 volt fuses which are all listed here so it would be a good idea to go and buy some spare 12 volt blade fuses and just carry them so if any fuse did blow you can just re replace it and fix your issue and then you do have your build number here so should you need parts for this vehicle if you quote us or anyone other motorhome place this number they'll quote it to Auto Trail and they'll know when the vehicle was built what specification it was and what part is required for your vehicle and you've got a 12 volt there for charging off your leisure side so below the driver's side side facing bench seat you've got your main leisure battery in here with the fuse so if you lift this cover off you've, your battery's under there should you need access to it and you've got your additional battery with the fuse here you would lift this off and you get access to the batteries there so that's where your leisure batteries live and you've got some storage here as well so when making the bed up you'll have to adjust this boom arm table so if you just loosen this screw so use the big arm here loosen the screw just so it's loose enough for it to slide on itself like so and then you can tighten it back up behind the seat and then to make the beds if you slide them both out in the middle the backrests in like so that is your bed made there but the tip is what we recommend that you turn the cushions upside down because if you turn them upside down as you can see you've got a flat surface you've got no bull nose of the cushion and no ribs you can then put a fitted sheet on and a duvet and it's far more comfortable to sleep on this side than it is this side as it's quite lumpy and hard and it's nice and soft the other side cool. so to operate your windows we've got these tabs here so if you lift the levers push out and then turn these to keep the window out loosen them to bring the window in and make sure they are shut when traveling so all skylights and windows must be shut when traveling as they're only plastic and a good wind will just rip them off the vehicle that's not what you want as you're going on your holidays you've got your blackout blind and you've got your fly screen but the only other window so this window here on the passenger side of the vehicle in the lounge is a slide window because of the gas locker so if you were to have the window out and open the gas locker you would rip the window off so it's a slide window like so and does have a blackout and fly screen on there as well to operate this the main hecky roof light so the larger one in the um, lounge cab area so if you loosen the two arms off and then you turn it and it'll open itself up and allow a breeze in but just because it's over the cab doesn't mean it's got, it can be open when driving you've got to be shut and securely fastened in and then at the front you've got your fly screen and you've got your blackout blinds so to operate your Avtex drop down TV so you've got a turnbuckle here so this is when storing it for traveling turn it loosen it off if it does struggle to come down and you've loosened this you've got a lever here so if you pull the lever out that will release the telly should it be stuck you've got a red light there which means it's on standby so if you press the remote and turn it on it'll go blue come on there so once it is on you've got source so if you press source you can put on it so should you ever get a satellite fitted to the vehicle this tell you is satellite ready you've got DVD you've got AV HDMI 1 and 2 and a USB and then once you have arrived at a different site, obviously the signal will be different as you've travelled. If you press AQ2, 
T, this big orange button, press and hold. Press and hold until the screen goes blue. Like so, ask you what country you're in, it's automatically set to UK, just press OK. And it'll do an auto tune and find as many channels as it can. Well, trust me, yes. So to turn the seats around, you've got two levers here on both seats, driver and passenger. So if you pull them and it should turn around, should it get stuck on the door or the um the pillar, just readjust the driving position, so pull the seat forward or back and it should spin freely and then you'll be do the same with the driver's seat. So now in the cab, so at the right of the driver you do have your handbrake which is located just down beside us, like so. You've got your electric windows and electric mirror adjustments which turn the joystick, you'll get your big mirror and your blind spot and then just down here on the dashboard you've got your fog lights and your headlight adjustments but you've also got your alarm indicator so if you did want to leave an, a dog or yourselves in here you have to turn these sensors off and to do so ignition on ignition off within six seconds press and hold you'll see it flash until basically it flashes no more and then these have gone off but as soon as you start the engine it will go back to default setting of them being armed so you'd need to do that every time you've got your blinds so if you pinch them and you like so these are just magnetic so if it's going to be a windy night elastic band or bobble around there just to stop them pinging open you've got your trip computer on here which will tell you your range your miles per gallon your traveling times, your distance traveled and so on, on your wipers there. You've got your lights and your indicators here, cruise control and speed limiter on there, so speed, uh, cruise at the top and speed at the bottom. Volume, mute, voice command, hands free, and you can scroll through your contacts or your channels, your radio channels. Six speed manual gearbox, that beeping is just telling us we're hooked up, so do not move. And then you've got your reverse camera on the mirror there, not in the dash as, it, as it's been put on the mirror on this model. You've got your temperature on the outside, fan speed on the in, must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work. And then the aircon is fed to this box here, so should you have anything for the road, i.e. chocolate sweets and so on and that's just your code for your keys and your radio there put your distribution on here so where you want the air to go and either recirculate and now bringing fresh air in and on the radio You've got your radio which is AM and FM and then once you've pressed you can save 3 or you can click all and you can save 12. Media would either be CD, USB or auxiliary down here or Bluetooth audio should you connect your phone. You've got navigation so with your navigation say it's straight forward but don't put home in. Um, take that out, don't put your home address in because if someone steals your motorhome they may come back and rob your house and that's the last thing you want. So um, take, put somewhere near, so the street before, street after, the street but not the name or not the house number or somewhere where you can get home but don't put that in. You've got your phone, so connect your phone, settings, add device, I'll ask you to find you connect, make sure the pins match. Once you've pressed pair, I'll ask you to sync your phone book and then that is you connected. And then below you've got your traction control, so this takes your traction control off. Hill descent control, which forget about because it's for an automatic and this is a manual. Hazards, locks all three doors, so cab and habitation and heated mirrors. And then you do have your 12 volt supply there. 
and if you press the setting cog here you'll be able to get in change the display the brightness and you'll be able to change your time there so once the engine's on you'll get be able to press set time and you'll be able to change the time or the date should the engine battery have gone flat or you the clocks have gone back and forth you'll be able to change them and then you will have all your audio settings and bluetooth settings in there or you can press that clear all of them and then you can factory reset the head unit like so so thanks for choosing time valley motorhomes we hope you enjoy your new motorhome should you need any assistance feel free to contact 01207 272 777 or sales at Time Valley Motorhomes.